You're in the army now. We have, some, we have some singers, and I'm going to sit with my back to you so my microphone picks up their tones. But let me put this down in, so I don't accidentally. OK. All right. Good morning, everyone. I'm Emily Rendell Araujo. I think I know many of you, but I'm the director here at Uptown Social. With me, I have my friends. Uh, we all sang together in college. So when Marilyn said the theme for today was the military, she asked me, Emily, would you sing the Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy? And I said, I would love to. And I recruited my friends, Crystal and Jenna. So we are going to sing the Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy for you in three-part harmony a cappella. Crystal actually grew up to become the minister at my church, so she is Reverend <laughs> Crystal Clemmy, and Jenna grew up to be a music teacher and a rock star, so she is <laughs> gay. And the joke being, what do you get when you put a businesswoman, a minister, and a rock star together, and the answer is the Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy. <laughs> we are also assisted by Lewin. You want to give everybody a wave, Lewin? Or not. <laughs> no. So I am going to kick us off, but I have a quick story. Um, this morning, Joanne, who's volunteering out front, asked me, Emily, do you, do you have a tin of snuff in your back pocket? And I, I was like, me? I'm the squarest person that ever was. I would never. I've never smoked anything. And I pulled out my pitch pipe. <laughs> so we had quite a giggle. <laughs> All the cool kids did. Let's do that better. He was a famous trumpet man from out Chicago way. He had a boogie style that no one else could play. He was the top man of his craft. But then his number came up and he was gone with the draft. He's in the army now, a blowing reveille. He's the boogie woogie bugle boy of Company B. They made him blow a bugle for his Uncle Sam. It really brought him down because he couldn't jam. The captain seemed to understand. Because the next day the cat went out and drafted a band. And now the company jumps when he plays Reveille. He's the boogie woogie bugle boy of Company B. A root, a toot, a toot to the attitude. He blows it eight to the bar. In boogie rhythm, he can't blow a note unless the bass and guitar is playing with him. He makes the company jump when he plays Reveille. He's the boogie woogie bugle boy of Company B. He puts the boys to sleep with boogie every night and wakes them up the same way in the early right. They clap their hands and stamp their feet because they know how he plays when someone gives him a beat. He really breaks it up when he plays Reveille. He's the boogie woogie bugle boy of Company B. A root. A toot, a toot to the end, a toot, he blows it eight to the bar. In boogie rhythm, he can't blow a note unless the bass and guitar is playing with them. He makes the company jump when he plays Reveille. He's the boogie woogie bugle boy of Company B. Maybe, listen, January is going to be uh, turnips and tea. We'll think of some. Tea for two? We'll oh. think of some. Okay, all right. Thank you for having us. Thank now you. Now they're a real show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. Well, you're in the Army now. I'm on a committee for the county with Craig Stewart. Craig Stewart, I always, I always say he is the Sheboygan County Veterans Administration representative, but that's the wrong title. Craig, what's your actual title? I am the Deputy Director of the Sheboygan County Veterans Service Office. Same idea, same idea. And I cannot beat that intro. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, 
we're going to make SOS. I said to Craig and his boss, would it be too kitschy? They said, no, Marilyn, do SOS. So we have an upscale version of SOS. But instead of toast, we're making some sweet cream biscuits. And then because it is autumn, we'll do a Waldorf salad with apples, kohlrabi, and pistachios. And then we have ro I have roasted acorn squash, buttercup squash, butternut squash, and we'll have that over there so you can taste the difference. And I think all of them work to make pumpkin pie. The acorn is kind of pale, but the other ones work great for pumpkin pie. I have my wonderful volunteers. Faith is going to be the squash lady today. <laughs> and Janet has been helping all morning, and of course she helps her sister all the time with the tables. Jackie's been running like mad since she arrived. And this is Peg, which I call Sue. She's, she's doing the apple. And then my friend Liz Giovanetti, she and I started the cafe at the Art Center. By the way, in the year 2000, when they started the cafe at the Art Center, the Volrath Company made 300 of these to be used in the cafe. Until about two years ago, these are the plates that were used in the cafe. But it looks like an army plate, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Peggy Sue. Thank you, Jackie Vicky. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Faith. All right. And back in the corner, of course, is Ann Craft. Ann, do you want to say something special today? No, I'm right in the corner. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Let's start with SOS. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. We could not put it together without volunteers, you know that. And I'm a volunteer too. Someone said you don't get paid, I said no, I'm retired, no one can hire me, I will only volunteer. Then I get to call the shots. <laughs> Who has been in the military? B, was in the Air Force, Army, Army, Army. okay. Now, um, I brought my Pan Am uniform. It's not, it's not the Air Force, but it sort of looks like the Air Force, doesn't it? So I brought it along. That was quite a while ago. <laughs> okay, Scott, let's start with the SOS. Cream chip beef on toast, and we all know what SOS means. Oh, while I'm getting this going, would you cut up the dried beef in a jar. This is Hormel. Dried beef in a jar. This is Armor. And they did not have the plastic packages with the lunch meat. They were out of them. So all of it today is one of these two. And you can cut them up any way you like. Okay. All right. And I'll start with this. But I do need the, my recipe. Okay. Butter. And it says three tablespoons of butter. I just put in a stick. <laughs> and we need three tablespoons of flour. Oh, gosh, yeah. And last month, I had so much trouble with the white sauce. This month, it's going. It must be the well, it, That's it. It's the weather. It's either the weather or the butter. That's right. OK, and milk. Look at the, as smooth as can be. I love that. And I didn't measure because I was going to use whatever was left in this bucket, in this jar. And then we have nutmeg, oops, and garlic powder. And of course, you can use fresh onion, you can use fresh garlic, or you can use the powder. There are no army police coming to check your cooking in your kitchen. A little Worcestershire. A little dry mustard. I saw a joke in the newspaper 
couple weeks ago. Maybe you saw it too. It was this elderly couple. It was a comic strip. And the wife was eating some scrambled eggs. She said, oh, these are crunchy. And he said, I followed the recipe, two whole eggs. <laughs> You're smarter than that. <laughs> and, and you have chickens, I which do. reminds me, our famous eggs. Remember, I don't like brown eggs. <laughs> I'll need them back eventually. All right. Let's see if we can thicken this. We'll put in the dried beef. And this is more than what the recipe calls for, but better more than less. But you, so far you put more in than the recipe called for anyway, so you're better. Than that. That's right. And a little green onion. Would you stir that one? Well, and then sure a little di red diced pepper. Oh, you're making the deluxe. That's exactly. <laughs> well, I asked you and your boss if we, well, I said that. Should we do SOS? And they said yes. So we'll do it. And she did say upscale, and this is definitely upscale. Yeah. More than two or three. I remember mother made this when we were children, and we liked it just uh -huh. wonderfully. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. And I'm guessing that it was made a lot in the 50s and 60s because the ingredients were not expensive. Mm hmm. Right. Okay, now I have some tasting spoons someplace, right there. Oh, look at that. It's nice and colorful. Ooh. It's, oh, it does taste. Yum, yum. No, it, it's heavy on the meat, so it, it's a little salty. But soldiers always had to have lots of salt and water to keep sure. going. Stay hydrated. Yep. yep. Okay. I will pull this plug, and then, Craig, I will hold this. If you will just, I'll do this if you'll just scoop it into here. Sure. So you'll need apple juice and water today. Okay. Any questions about SOS? No, this one says 90% fat free. None of them say anything about, and gluten free, nothing about salt free. Well, I don't think you can make dried beef without using salt. It might, be, it might be fat free, but the sodium is extremely, extremely, yes. extremely sure. yeah. Yep, yes. right. It is. Cream biscuits. We could use toast, but I thought cream biscuits taste very good, and they're very simple to make. I have two cups of flour, a tablespoon of baking powder. <laughs> And I know Jackie found measuring spoons for me and a, and a teaspoon of salt. We do need salt in the biscuits. There's lots of biscuits. There's sourdough biscuits, there's milk biscuits, there's salt rising biscuits. And, you could, and I'm using straight cream for the liquid, but I'll bet you could use beer if you wanted to, just so it's, just so it's wet. Yeah and a tablespoon of sugar. And sugar is not to make it sweet. Sugar just enhances the flavor. It sort of works like salt does. It enhances the flavor. Okay, and here we go. Mix together the dry ingredient. A cup and a half of cream. And of course you know, this probably will not open the way we want it to. You, we can get this far and not any further, right? So we open up the whole thing. You've all had the same problem. About a cup and a half. You want to just give that a stir? Here, 
in some melted butter that's not melted at all. <laughs> it was melted. It was melted, that's correct. It's soft. There we go, there we go. Yeah, and they're nice and sticky, and that is what we want. Now, of course... You're sitting in the splash zone. <laughs> we could put them out and make them into the flat biscuits, but I like to do it this way. I spray the... Yep, and the outside, too. Then... Whoops, and, the, and even if it doesn't glue together here, it will when it's baking. And that's the first measuring device she's used today. Yeah. <laughs> Way to go. Only for convenience, right? <laughs> that, that is correct, for convenience. And we get about 10 out of a recipe. Use all that on your spoon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And this time we're going to get nine. <laughs> and you know it sticks to the outside also. That's why I sprayed the outside of the ice cream scoop as well. And then, and I put all the melted butter into the biscuits. I was supposed to save some to put on top, which I didn't. So let's put some Pam on there. <laughs> yep. As you do at home, you improvise. You just use what you have. And then a little bit of sugar just to sprinkle on top. Again, not to make it sweet, but just to enhance the flavor. And you'll see if you like these biscuits. Now, I, my husband ate two as soon as they came out of the oven, but I didn't make these today, so you'll have to imagine how delicious they were yesterday. And these will go into the magic oven. <laughs> Any questions about the biscuits? No. They really are easy to make. And uh, you can see it's not lots of trouble. Let's work down to the salad. A week ago today, I did a, a funeral for my daughter-in-law's mother. Yeah. And, and she's the same age as me. Anyway, um, I made hot beef sandwiches. And Amy said to me, you don't have to cook the beef. Just buy the beef from Miesfeld's already cooked. I said, OK. I didn't even know they had that. And I met Miesfeld's a lot. It was very good. And then we had bun, little buns and marinated raw vegetables. You all know the marinated raw vegetable salad. Actually, that was the hit the marinated raw vegetables, and a Waldorf salad being autumn. We did apples and, I forget. Where are you finding kohlrabis now? Grocery store. Oh. Grocery store. They have yep, they did. And of course, I need a little knife, and I think I have one someplace. Here. And of course, let's see if I can do it in front. It's. Cut off the bottom, cut off the top, and then I just peel it like this. Now I saw on YouTube or something like that, they used a potato peeler. That's a lot of work to use a potato peeler when a little paring knife goes so quickly, unless you're really good with a potato peeler. And then, and I thought, I'll make little sticks so you'll be able to tell the kohlrabi from the diced apple, <laughs> if that makes a difference. And I do like cutting. I. My friend Liz is here to wash dishes. She likes washing dishes and cleaning the kitchen. Oh, wow. Hallelujah. Bring her in my house. Yes. 
and I like cutting. Okay, that's enough. All right, let's put in the kohlrabi. All right. Put in the apples. Different kinds. Yes, red and green, oh, simply right. for the color. To make here, you can, and then, and here, Craig. If if it's easier to use two, use two. The dressing is simply mayonnaise, a little Miracle Whip, and lemon juice. My daughter sent to me yesterday, she's in California, this Meg Military Energy Gum. 100 milligrams of caffeine per piece. And I suppose soldiers could use that sometimes. It'd give them that extra step, sure. Right, when they have to step for 22 miles. Yep. yep. And they're young. So why are you using mayonnaise and Miracle Whip? I want that little bit of tang of the Miracle Whip. Okay. But you, that is not compulsory. I just like that tang. And we'll see if this is enough, or do we have to add more? We'll find out. Some people like their Waldorf very mayonnaise-ish. Some people like it less. And lemon juice. Let's give it a, a squish. I think you could ride on this all the way to Elkhart Lake and you wouldn't feel a thing. <laughs> and probably take out the seeds.